Oh man. Remember that? Remember how I used to do that in the beginning of every video? What's going on people? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. I mean for you, not for me. I've been doing stuff. I just... It's been a while since I've sat down and actually edited some footage. I got a lot of footage and I'm lazy. Anyway, what have I been doing? Let's see. The first thing I wanted to get done on my list was getting the rest of the interior installed. So I got a little bit here and there in, but I wanted to get everything in. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let's get to it. the interior in minus one backrest which I actually just finished up now I still got to get it installed but other than that at the time everything was in 
So it is looking dope as. So now that the fun stuff is over, it's time to really start thinking about what do I need to get done to get my boat to the water safely. That means taking a look at the trailer. So a couple things on the trailer. One is the boat actually didn't come with any transom straps. So the hooks are on the transom for the boat, but there's no straps actually holding it to the trailer. So I got online, started looking around, trying to figure out, do I just want to do normal? straps like my old boat had like kind of the lever type but the more i thought about it i hated those things because if you didn't get the tension just right it was like impossible to get it to latch and even sometimes if it was just a hair off they just pop off in their own while you're driving which does not feel that safe so after doing a little bit more research i found out that they make these things called uh buckles trent it's basically a seat belt for your boat so I got two of those and let's get them installed. those are installed I feel a lot better about actually driving my boat down the road but there was another another big issue that I've been putting off since I bought it uh, when I brought this thing home I actually had no trailer brakes and I was aware of that when I bought it the guy told me he had issues with the brakes I think he said when he would apply the brakes they would lock up and not release so doing a little bit of research on the Google internet machine um, it seems like a common issue with surge brakes that would lead to that is there's a tiny little orifice at the back of the master cylinder in the surge coupler and if that thing gets clogged up with dirt it can kind of act like a check valve so what happens is when you apply the brakes and the surge coupler compresses and starts to pressurize the fluid back into the brake lines that dirt can kind of get dislodged out of the hole and then when the brakes try and release and force that fluid back into the master cylinder that piece of dirt or particle or whatever lodges back into that orifice and doesn't allow the fluid to flow back, which essentially locks the brakes. I don't know if that's actually what was going on, but I decided to dive into the master cylinder. I initially was just going to buy a new coupler, but after looking into it, I was like, well, let me take a look at it first and see. So I took the thing apart and the master cylinder was so gross inside. It was just full of rust, corroded beyond belief. But all of the components that were moving, I guess I should say, actually were in pretty decent shape. So I totally disassembled the master cylinder, cleaned it, put it back together, got everything working, and bench bled the master cylinder, and it was actually working perfectly fine. So I'm going to roll with that for now and see how it goes. That being said, once I got the master cylinder cleaned out and totally flushed and bench bled, I didn't just want to throw it back on the on the trailer and just risk 
there being a bunch of corrosion within the brake lines themselves. The, the source of the corrosion was water got into it basically over time, whether it was condensation or just actual water. And water and cast iron, which is what the master cylinder is made out of, obviously don't go well together. But water and brake fluid are also a horrible corrosive combination. So I decided to completely redo the brake lines on the entire trailer. Sounds like a lot of work, but it's actually pretty quick. I did it in a couple hours. So I decided to use this nickel copper alloy brake line material instead of galvanized. It wasn't that much more expensive and supposedly it lasts basically forever. So I decided to go that route and flare my own lines and all that kind of stuff. So let's get to it.
right guys, so that is gonna do it for this one. I have a ton more footage to edit, so there will be more stuff coming out here soon, but I think that's enough for one video. I now feel comfortable actually driving the boat somewhere. Now that my brakes are working, my boat is strapped down to the trailer properly, and now that the interior's in, there's not a ton left to do. I kind of started making a little bit of a checklist here and getting down to the wire. I think we're going to have this thing in the water pretty, pretty soon. All right, guys, thanks for checking this one out. And as usual, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this with a friend, hit that little notification bell next to the subscribe button, and that'll tell you when I upload a new video. And at this rate, it's like super inconsistent, so it's easy to miss one. So again, don't forget to do that. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I usually try and check them out and I can't believe it, but today I might actually be hitting 1K subscribers. I still can't believe that's even possible. Who the hell would watch this? I'm just some dude in my basement talking to myself. See ya.